Well, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I think that makes a nice guy. The nice guys of, of, of comedy, though, because it's true. You guys are nice. Like, that's your hook, you know? We do so we're like, sticking I don't that on a poster. To the rap scallions, you know? I want, I want wholesome content. Get a brew and sit your ass down for the Nice Guys of Comedy podcast. Nice guys. Nice guys of comedy. The nice guys. The nice guys of comedy. And here are your hosts, real life northerners, Jack Vincent and Nick Crooks. They're from up north. Gravy and chips. So listen to the words coming out their lips. I said they're from up north. Gravy and chips. So listen to these words coming out their lips. Yeah, you nobody wants the bad boys me. of comedy, do they? Nobody wants, also, nobody wants the bad boys of comedy. If, if it was the bad boys of comedy, that sounds like it should be something like OnlyFans. It sounds like we're giving a different type of content. <laughs> I also just feel like anyone who went with bad boys of comedy is definitely not a bad boy in comedy. (laughs) Like I said on the podcast the other day, I was like, as soon as you're a person who says you're humble, you're not humble anymore. Like, it's just like, 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 those aren't the same thing. Once you recognize it, you've lost it. You've lost it. (laughs) Once you're humble, you're not humble anymore. I love it. I think it's, it's apt. It's, it is It is very, very fucking apt. But before we crack on it then, uh, Nick, do you want to take the reins and introduce this week's podcast? Yes, I will. Hello, guys. You're listening to the Nice Guys of Comedy podcast with your usual hosts, me, Nick Crooks, and Jack Vincent. Whoop, whoop. And we're joined by our guest this evening, the wonderful Alex Stringer. Because uh, let's face it, Nick, you do fuck all. Um, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the talent. Thing... I've said this in the past. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not going to sit here and and make you guilt you into knowing that you've probably listened to every single episode of the Nice Guys. But one thing that we mentioned in last week's episode, Alex, was that um, this is actually going to be a gong show, and you and Nick are up against each other, and I'm the only judge. So crack on. <laughs> no, it's an absolute. <laughs> we have oh. done that before. We have. Nick, and I will. Before. <laughs> Nick straight away because when we was mentioning that we've got you on, he did instinctively say, "Goes no, she beat me at a gong show, so I'm not playing that game." <laughs> that was actually the first time I met Alex. Duh. Yeah, like it's a great first impression. Like, yeah. so it. she wiped the floor. Kill him with kindness. Like, yes. No. Kill not him with all. kindness. <laughs> Side note, whilst that's been brought up, I'm going to mention this because this actually happened to me today talking about killing me kindness. So, a bit of a, a slightly long story, but I'll bring it down as quickly as possible. But last year, I got an internet troll. I actually got someone who found every single video of me on the internet and started to leave na- like comments about how bad I was and how there's no <laughs> funny I'm doing anything like that. And I laughed it off. I thought nothing of it. going because I. What was weird was it started on my hot water videos but then went to other videos that I had got as well. And I was like, oh, I've made it. Like, <laughs> it's like, thought nothing of it for about, literally about 11 months it's been. I think we actually mentioned it in the first episode or two of this podcast. And uh, so I thought nothing of it. And then another comedian, who will rename re- re- nameless because it's not my place to say anything, messaged me and was like, I've just come across these videos with these nasty comments I hope you don't mind, but I've put some positive comments on there and I've put some likes on stuff and all that. And I was like, no, of course, blah, blah, that's fine. Didn't realise that this would ignite the troll back up. <laughs> <laughs> One of these hot water videos ended up getting to like 50, 60, 70 comments of this argument because this comedian who left the, the comments on them, he didn't do it from his main account. So it looked like a fake account. So then this troll thought it was me who was sticking up for myself. <laughs> which, why would I do that 11 months later? I don't know. Like, just taking all this courage to do it. But at one point... Yeah, like, I'm going to pedal back. I'm going to see it. And then I'm going to pedal back. And then 11 months, I'm going to have all those pieces. I probably feel in comedy gigs when someone's like heckles. And I'm like, I'm going to be right with you with a witty re- <laughs> report in 11 months. <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> Come back in 11 months and I'll give you a response to that. But yeah, so it it ended up being like this massive thing where this guy was like, oh, you've got an hour to prove that you're not Jack to this other account. Or you owe me five grand. <laughs> so I was what? like, and then it, then it got to a point going, prove yourself or I'll find your IP address. Now, what I did was killed them with kindness. I, in the end, I was literally just like, you know what, mate? I don't have anything to prove to you. Neither does this person. You're also commenting from a blank account. Why do we have to prove ourselves and you don't have to do anything? Comedy subjective. You didn't enjoy it. Move on. Basically did all this. And I, I just went, I'm done now. They continued by arguing on the comments. And I was like, I'm done. I'm not wasting my time. So I woke up this morning and this troll has gone onto my personal YouTube to find the video that I sent to promoters, which I've, I've, I've listed. I thought I'd left it as unlisted, but I've actually put it as listed. But he left me a free paragraph apology. And he was there going, oh, I've had time to think about it. Um, what I said was hurtful. Um, and it's cowardly. Uh, you are right. Comedy is subjective. And... Uh, uh, it's it's proper gone into like a proper apology. It's like I wish you all the best and I hope that one day you've proved me wrong and I'll see you on TV. And I was like, did I just win? Did, and did... to me, I'm literally I'm just waiting for you to be like, and his name was Nicholas. <laughs> <You're> like, oh, <laughs> we've been we've, so we've been sense. through this. We've been through this that me being the troll would be the, the like the best thing to ever happen. But sadly, I am not the genius behind this. <laughs> Do you know what? No, what would even be a more coincident thing if Alex just went, and it's me. Yeah. <laughs> you got she's, me. <laughs> she's waited her time to be asked on this podcast. <laughs> just to release that. That could work. <laughs> he could have. That, that's that's the, long the long game, game my friend. Drunk. That is yeah. the long game. <laughs> Like, like, oh, I'm going to put them off the scent by being like, I can't even do this week. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> so clever. <laughs> oh, smart there. But no, you, like we were saying uh, earlier, you you have brought uh, and got into the podcasting game. So come on, tell us a little bit about your podcast then. Um, So it's called a Hypothesis Podcast, but it's supposed to be like this, like as in like, I, I think this has kind of been um, taken on by a lot of the queer community and then a lot of, you know, cis um, see it's hard now because they keep doing this, keep talking about cisgendered and cis is in what the podcast is called and it's confusing people. Uh-huh. Anyway, um, yeah, it's basically realised that that kind of idea, um, the reason why I've never done another one is because... Um, I am really lazy and um, don't really want to just chat shit for an hour in the sense that, like, I would get bored and be like, oh, and also it's a lot of admin. Like, you guys know this. Like, it's hard kind of chasing after people, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's like, no, never heard of it. Admin, what's that? <laughs> yeah, what's, what's the admin? <laughs> I just, I just show up. I just he show just up. shows up for an hour. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I, I give Jack the praise he deserves. Well. You know, he, he doesn't does even all. share it on social media. He doesn't even share this on social media. The thing is, I, I think I'll give it a couple of days because you get more things and then I forget. Like, I'm at work and then I think, right, that's pinged up. Or I've been tagged in it. I'll share it tomorrow <laughs> and get more views that way. Waited a few days. You know, like the Facebook algorithms and stuff like that. And then I forget. So, because you'd forget the long game. You'd be yeah. like, in yeah. time, you'd be like, yeah. I was supposed to come back with a wussy retort. Yeah, um, I, yeah I'd forget yeah. I was the troll, wouldn't I? I'd just go, <laughs> yeah. Did I, oh, shit, yeah, it was me. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it was me. <laughs> um, yeah, so I basically was like, oh, I'm not, you know, spoke to different people and was like, mm, whatever. And then my mate, um, I was going to do a podcast with him. Again, not a comic. Um, and then... He selfishly got a job as a podcast producer at Sony. Just so rude. Um, <laughs> and so I was like, um, what What do I do now? And then I was talking to my, my gal pal. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm so happy for him. But I was also just excited about the possibility of this podcast. And then um, my mate, Julia, who is a scientist, neuroscientist, and she's big on TikTok down with kids um, was like I've been wanting to have 
like start a podcast but um don't know really the way to go about it and don't really want to do it solo because we're bad um so she was like do you want to have like a chat over zoom (laughs) (laughs) we get the hint skype's outdated blame nick (laughs) yeah well i'm like we're from yorkshire so the fact that we have to pay for zoom is a massive off put yeah we only only get yeah that's the thing is we talk shit for too long that's the thing we do so annoying. I and don't obviously, think it makes a lot of sense actually now. Yeah, because obviously we do it. We we normally say about an hour, and it normally runs about half an hour to forty minutes of actual stuff that we actually can use. But then also, like on because on Zoom, if you do it one on one, it's unlimited. But then as soon as we bring a guest in, then we're like, oh, I've got to start paying for this shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel, yeah, I feel, yeah. That makes a lot more sense now you've explained it. Um. So I take it back. Um, and <laughs> yes, I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, um, we 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 spoke over Zoom, and and we were like, what what could it be? And and I love podcasts that I learn while listening, and that are funny as well. And and she taught me GCSE science, like, so I got a B because of her because all my, <laughs> and so I was like, yes. Um, that'd be taking me all the way to stand up comedy for free. Um, <laughs> so then, um, but yeah, so she was like, uh, I was like, I know that you can make science palatable, and, and she's actually finishing her PhD this year. And her, her like dream job is to be like a science communicator, which is a thing. Um, so she's been on like BBC Bite Stars and shit. So I'm getting a great end reveal because she actually <laughs> some kind of uh, play. Um, and I'm <laughs> like, I'm going to do weird SA and show up. Um, but yeah, so we were like, in the course as well, like you guys, like, you know, your friends, and I'm sure this came up initially as well in terms of you guys planning this, but I think I was worried about like, I overthink everything, I think, and I think it's like, do I want to be this, like, I don't want to come across as, like, this great man of the podcast, but then is there a comedian person in the podcast? And I was like, oh, but I was, I was like, oh, this, 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 it seems easier in my brain to, to deal with. And also, mm-hmm. I think like the basis of a lot of friendships is to make the other person laugh in the sense that I, that's the only reason I have any friends. So, <laughs> I'm just gonna do that. I'm just gonna make make her laugh, and that that's the pure, like that's the basis of a lot of friendships. So, um, yeah, we kind of came up with this thing of hypo, like presenting a hypothesis, so, um, like a statement, and then you debate it and kind of so is it this or this, and and do we believe in it or do we not? And yeah, so she looks at the science, and I just find she should sit on Reddit. <laughs> You've got the best I'm, job. You have got yeah. the best part of there that I just find stupid shit on Reddit that people think people yeah. say. Yeah, honestly, it's the easiest thing ever. I'm just like, oh, the, like it's not even a job, but it's like, oh, this is piece of piss. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so I love we, it. So like, we were quite um, like we're both kind of control freaky anyway, and so we were like, we want to, you know, get a a nice image and then we spoke to my mate who is a podcast producer and he was like if you can like drop multiple episodes at the same time because um he was like people have said to me in the past you know uh listen to my podcast and i'll listen and i really like the vibe and then a week passed and i forgotten it exists so he was like with that you're given like a wealth of content but also some people go and are like yeah, I'm not going to listen to a podcast about cognitive bias, like some riveting. Um, <laughs> the media is brainwashing, sounds like my kind of vibe. And then if they like the vibe, then you've got them for the other two. Because I know I've definitely like listened to podcasts and gone, that title interests me. Yeah. But So I'll, I'll listen to that one. And then I become a fan very quickly. 
so then I'm there all the time um so yeah he was really good with like giving us tips and then my mate is um like an artist like a musician she does stuff with like BBC introducer and I basically was like hey for like little to no money can you make our dream go and she was like yeah um <laughs> and, and yeah and so then we kind of just like yeah just tried to tried to make it work and it's really nice that like some people who clearly don't have jobs have listened to it in the past like 24 hours love you guys cross <laughs> pollinating and um, that bit analogy I was talking about and um, that maybe they they're like we you know we uh we like the vibe and that's really nice within like 24 hours of stopping basically. Yeah, I, I do find that some people, like the we- not the weird ones, but like you do find that some people get hooked really quickly and it's the people you wouldn't expect. Like I, when we first obviously started the podcast, we, you get a lot of people, friends and family who want to support you. So they obviously, they give a listen to like the first episode or two. And then after a while, that kind of heat just dies down because it naturally does. Yeah. And I remember once that um, I was in, a, I was chatting to someone and a friend and they then mentioned something from like an episode that had been like was episode number 30 odd and i just sat there and i was like are you referencing my podcast i'm like yeah i still listen and i was like all oh, right okay like i didn't i didn't expect that i'm like no it's, it's, it's expecting really... no listeners <laughs> I, I was like, I'm so fun to keep tuning in but like no it's it, it's got like they actually use the word that you've got it's, got it's got a nice vibe it's um because one thing that we've kind of been praised on as well is is I, I, I suspect this is kind of the opposite to what most podcasts aim for, which is kind of worrying. But like, because we have no set topic and we have no set like kind of rigidness of this is what we're going to do, some people find it really easy listening because we just talk about yeah. random shit. And some people like I like that because it's like chatting to two friends. And don't get me wrong, like there are some times where I, I mean, we've tried with that when we've come back this time round that we want to be a bit more structured because sometimes it gets to a point where we're like almost. Not, I wouldn't say forcing crap out because I don't think we'd ever get that point. But sometimes, like, we don't really know what we're talking about anymore. So we've brought a little bit of structure in, but we wanted to, keep, like, like we even said to you with a, the prep today, like, we have a subject in mind that we want to talk about, but I'm not going to sit here and give you, you need to answer all these questions. Yeah, I think it's like we have, we have, like, our each, like, research that we bring to the table. But then otherwise, it is really, like, fair game. And it's just kind of like throwing the wall and, throwing shit at the wall and see what sticks like it is very much that vibe and I think that's nice and that's the other thing as well is like people have been like oh are you gonna get any guests on and you're like it's hard because like you said like you have guests and sometimes the difference is if you have guests and a format trying to cram all of your points of of reference that you need to hit for it to be a regular segment um, and also have another person in to play. It's a lot. And so we've been like, yeah. you know, we're going to just kind of get our feet under the table. And then if it comes to it that we come to a subject matter that we're like, you know what, this would be a great one to get someone in on, then we will do that. But it's like, yeah, it's, it's quite hard, isn't it, to kind of bring someone else into it when it is very free. Because, like, obviously... This is kind of like Q&A, friends chatting, like whatever. But when you're kind of coming at it from science perspective, like yeah. um, maybe a shy that someone like, kind of gets expressed <laughs> their expert, they're not going to be like, stay with, I've got something to bring. Do you know what I mean? It's a bit of a, if they're not an expert, yeah. Or, yeah. No. no, I can imagine that we, very early on, we had an episode where we had two guests on and it was two guests that we both knew very well but what we found that well, that was an element that we felt that we were cramming far too much in because to be very to be very honest with you cramming four male white comedians onto one podcast every fucker it's wanted a nation's to talk. dream <laughs> that's what the nation wants right now <laughs> I, it wasn't the fucking editor's dream. I'll fucking tell you that for now. <laughs> it was a, it was a very a lot of egos. And like you said, he's, we were unstructured and we didn't really have that. But like, it, if you was a structure and there was an element of an actual fact basis there, then yeah, that would be that would be difficult and could get very heated. I mean, I have fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have fun on them all, but 
Yeah, I think that, I think you find that though that we've too many voices, aren't they? It's like yeah, that even their listeners like, who is that? Like what what is that? Like you can't yeah. yeah, especially if you're all white kids, you all sound the same. So <laughs> <Just like, laughs> we're all exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, that leads on really nicely to the, what, what we want to talk about today. We want to kind of, we've touched upon it previously with, with kind of other guests that we've had on as well, but we've never really spent an, like an episode talking about it. But we kind of wanted to talk about kind of females in, in comedy and, and what better to get an expert than an actual real life female to actually discuss. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, one thing I've always kind of, and I, and I find, I hate to use the word interesting because it makes me think that i'm looking at this like a type of a zoo of someone like looking in whatever <laughs> but we've one thing i always do i always want to hear and again this sounds like i'm, a, I'm a, just been awful here is when you do experience sexism in comedy because from my point of view it'd be quite easy for me to say it doesn't exist because i've never experienced it and yeah. I, I i i find it fascinating but also educational when i do hear well actually this is an experience that i've had and i've sometimes gone no, that can't be right. And then, like, someone else will point up and go, "No, no, that happens quite often." I'm like, "Fuck off!" And it, 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 for me, it is, it is a shocking like experience because, again, like, I, I don't experience it because I, obviously I wouldn't. Yeah. But is that something that you find that you experience quite a bit? Um, I remember it might have actually been the gig that we did together. The the a gong show Nick, and someone so I did it a few times I think it was the, it was it was like I think I think this is the gig I'm talking about but basically um yeah like at the end of the show um oh I feel like I've said too many words before I say this and now I sound like a twat but so, so at the end of the show I won and then <laughs> she's, done, she's done see this. She's done this on purpose. At the end of the show, you know, when I when I won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when that happened, someone who's a comic who will remain nameless, but um I'll tell you when we're not recording. And then they can't come to me. Um came up to me <laughs> and was like, um, Female comics aren't funny, but you're a funny one. Um, and my friend had come to watch and was like ready to go. Was like pulled my earrings, vibes, like it was a lot. <laughs> and I was like, simmer down. We don't know if he has any kind of um, any kind of play within the industry. It sounds bad, but those the devil will get those people eventually. But um. Also, like, since kind of being around comedy, I've kind of been like, well, they're not going to be like, it's not going to um, be on live at the Apollo, in my opinion. So, <laughs> I kind of like, give a shit. Like, I don't care now. Um, so, I probably should just say his name, but oh well. Um, but yeah, so when that happened, I was like, wow. Like, I'd literally been doing comedy for like five weeks, and I was quite kind of stuck by that and then I don't know I think initially when I started I think I got a bit of like I worried that I was giving off um like I felt like it was either that that because you know I've always been like I'm happy to be a vagina tick on a line off if it means getting the gig but I don't care um I do think it, it makes it harder to be a female comic because people are like that's where the women aren't funny narrative comes from because they think you're you know speaking on behalf of all women and it's, it's problematic but with that I am um, like yeah I can't remember what I'm saying sorry <laughs> <laughs> no, but I get, I get you. I get your picture with the kind of the women in comedy narrative. Because in actual fact, I mean, also, I'm just going to take a very big step step, step here. Five weeks in comedy, and you win a gong show. All right, calm down. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'd like to point out, I still haven't been able to get past five minutes on a gong show. But okay. Um, to be fair, I did say that was like death or a fluke. But I think in in 
trying to not be horrible to myself and also um just because our imposter syndrome um episode is coming out on Monday and I I've realized how bad my negative self-talk is that it's not necessarily that I was like it was a fluke there was no speck of talent there it was more just like I didn't know going into it how people notice who wins and that was really helpful because I kind of was going in blind to it and then but it it was helpful in the sense that it allowed me to like get better gigs quicker you know what I mean? Yeah. Because people are like, who the fuck is this person that no one knows who they are type thing? Yeah. Um, yeah. That was what I was trying to say, sorry. With, um, I think I got the feeling that I was like, I didn't feel like I could be one of the boys when I started comedy. I felt a bit like, <clears throat> I felt like male comics either were like, um, I hope she don't, doesn't fancy me or I've never been around women and I don't know how to be <laughs> around women. Um, and kind of like, and that could also just be me not knowing these people and kind of going, Ugh. but I felt very much like on the outside. And then uh, only over doing comedy for a lot longer, I feel have people been like, oh, Alex is just like one of the boys. And that's not me being like, yeah, look, like boy, <laughs> just be kind of being like rock off, like and chill. I have a gab, and then we pack on. Like it's not. I do think though. Again, this might be the male in me having this point and kind of on the piggybacking on what you're saying there. I do think that comedy can be quite clicky when it comes to things like. Yeah, it can. And so yeah, maybe it's gendered. It's more just groups of people. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I mean. But then also what I would say is because comedy is predominantly a male game, I can see why it comes a boys club. Because it is a clicky environment when them clicks are predominantly blokes. Because I'm sure that when someone comes to a, a gig that me or Nick are doing and we have a couple of acts on... I, one prime example, it's not Nick's favourite gig, but a gig, a gig that we did in Bradford for the Fringe, there were four acts of us who... Yeah, Nick doesn't like this gig and <laughs> we'll tell you why in a minute, but... Um, there were four of us there out of like let's say six acts or however many acts but we all knew each other and we all stuck together so suddenly that could have been viewed as a click so anyone else would have come into that did would we have stick been... together okay did right we... okay the reason why nick doesn't like this gig okay did... is basically his whole premise and i'm not going to dwell on this too much nick because we talked about this in like five different podcasts okay right <laughs> Basically, their premise was that you didn't know the running order wasn't shown. It was basically go on stage and pick a name out of a hat situation. And then they tell that's when you go on, on the thing. They'd given Nick the wrong time. So he turned up like two hours before the gig even started. So he turns up at 6 p.m. And he was the last person on stage at 11 p.m. So, or was it like half 11? So he'd spent half 11. six half 11 nearly six hours at this venue now and it was also around the corner from his house i'd gotten a train over i was on first i fucked off in the break i was like nah, i mean i'm gone <laughs> so nick's not a uh, fan of this gig <laughs> i hated it obviously alex has been at the laughing llama venue so it's literally down the road from the laughing llama venue and i live like a minute away from the laughing llama venue so i could have just gone like just before I was going to yeah. go on, and I'd been uh, there all night. Yeah. <laughs> I did get up till about a quarter to 11 from 6 o'clock. But what as well, a good example there is I've done Laughing Llama before, and the whole lineup were people who were all Leeds-based comics, and we all knew each other, whereas there wasn't really, it didn't feel much of a clicky situation because there wasn't an outsider. But if someone else would have come to that, I can imagine how that would have felt, because comedy is such a clicky game. And I think it would, I can understand that why sometimes, I say it's a clicky game. I do hope that like, especially when I'm going, I run a gig, I try to not make it as clicky. And I do think a lot of promoters try to, but again, it's some people just gel better with others and it just happens. And then predominantly it's a bloke's game. So it can almost be a boys club. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think also as well, like I'm not a fussy person. Like I I don't want to be in those conversations. Um, but yeah, I think it's just kind of being a bit like, I don't know, it's just kind of wondering 
why you feel on the outside and is it is it warranted or whatever but I also think mm. a lot of comedians are like awkward as shit nerds <laughs> so it's like a lot of the time they just rock up and are like I don't know how to speak to anybody and then we all find ourselves in these weird venues that look like you know basement that Joseph Ritzel owns um, <laughs> and so just a lot of the time you're just like oh this is strange and also as well some people just like get off a lot of the time like as soon as they're finished and so yeah. I think I'm really glad that I didn't do that I do it now like fuck all y'all I'm going home but like <laughs> at the beginning I didn't I was like I'm gonna be there and I'm gonna enjoy them go laugh at every joke um, and that was really good because I think even though I felt a bit like that, over time, it's kind of just making friends with anyone. So I think it, it, can, it can be a bit of everything. But yeah, I think um, it's weird. Like I remember, I remember in the first lockdown when there was a lot of um, talk about, uh, you know, um, sexual assault within the industry. Yeah. yeah. And like, it was I remember reaching out to um a male comic friend of mine and being like, um like I felt like I hadn't like no one had kind of checked like checked on me and I wasn't like I need to be checked on because I was like nothing of that nature yeah. happened to me. Um but I was a bit like I think I was just a bit like I shouldn't feel fortunate that I've been doing comedy for 18 months and well two years nearly now but at the time it's 18 months that yeah. I was like I haven't been sexually assaulted but that's kind of the world we live in do you know what I mean yeah and, um yeah and I was kind of like really annoyed with this person but I think I was also in a weird place myself on that day yeah like I needed to like have my bath with it and then um, and then they were like, I I get in this mind frame a lot where I um I really struggle with um being met with kindness when I'm kicking off and it makes me feel really uncomfortable because I want them to go red as well. And then yeah. they're like, and this this person's like, you know what? You're totally right. I should check on the other women in the comedy that I'm friends with. Um, and I was like. Yeah, <laughs> I really wanted to be like, I really, really wanted to be in the right, and I was just made to feel like, yeah, it's time to rest. <laughs> but I wasn't able to like go mad. Um, but yeah, it was a weird time. I think, um, yeah, it's weird. Like that instance I said it uh, before. Like that's probably the only one that I've um. Uh, that's happened to me but I also yeah. know that like in terms of you know in terms of the sexual assault thing like I drive to and from gigs I'm not dependent on others for transport I think that's a big one um, yeah. and also as well I'm 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 27 like I started comedy when I was 25 and like some people who were starting out are like 20 and I'm not mm -hmm. saying it's like a huge gap of five years but you kind of I'm not being like I'm a woman of the world, but like you just kind of have a little bit more um, understanding of yourself and yeah. what you won't allow. Um, but then I also think it's never, it's never the, and I'm not. This is an agenda thing. either, like the victim and the perpetrator. It it, it goes across. Like it, that can be in terms of um, you know, I, I think it's such a big conversation as well. Like women in comedy leads into sexism in comedy and sexual assault in comedy but that's mm -hmm. because then the binaries are quite clear in comedy in the sense that it's like a massive pool of just predominantly straight white men yeah um, i'm looking at you nick um, <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna have this one i'm out of this one that's it. Yes. um and then but yeah and then and then everyone else is a bit like others and so it's kind of this like weird yeah weird it is thing. weird but, though 
I said, not weird in, in the sense that it's like in a negative way, like having these gender roles within comedy. I mean, me and Nick put on gigs, and we one thing I actually wanted to ask you about as well is as a female act, do you think that a lineup should have a woman on it? Every lineup? Um, it's hard, isn't it? Because I have like a lot of. Uh, it's weird because it's, it's to do with like seeing the things you want to see and all that sort of thing. But it's layered, I think, in comedy. So you can't help that the industry is male. But we have to question why it's predominantly yes. male. Is it because, is it because by and large, because it is like that already, that people feel less confident in which to enter that? Or is it that genetically male people like people who identify as male are generally um can take criticism better i don't know like i don't know what it is but i do think it's so layered because like i think if there's one on the bill i'm like I'm happy to be the solo one. Like, I'm happy to be the one. Um, and if there's none, it's like, well, you couldn't even do the bare minimum. Do you know what I mean? But then I also am I'm of the thought process that I'm a bit like, when, when, so a lot of, a lot of kids, I think, say, well, it's not our fault women progress faster so we then can't get the one on it. It's okay, like, yeah, I get it. But, I think when you're kind of going, well, I was fucking free. Like, you know, you're just like, why? Yeah, like, why is that not a conversation? But then I also understand that everyone's fighting for gigs and people deserve yeah. as much as others. And so you're, you shouldn't be getting the monopoly on gigs. Um, but yeah, so in an ideal world, the audience would be representative of um, the lineup would be representative of the audience it's performing to. Um, yeah. Be that, you know, gender, age, race, like it should be all of those things. And and I hope that at some point in the future, that a, a, an all male lineup won't get people's backs up, and because it, it won't it won't be such the norm, it will be a rarity. Yeah. And, won't give a shit, you know what I mean? Whereas I think yeah. at the minute now you're kind of like, really? Really? Like um but yeah, like I said, it's so layered, so I just try not to let it get too Yeah. Me. The reason why I asked is like I said because because being more I can't even get my teeth in here, but because me and Nick both put gigs on, we have we've had conversations where we've put a gig on with or without a budget because we've done both and we've had these applications come through and I mean actual fact sometimes Nick, especially in the early days of Laughing Lama, you didn't actually have asked for people. You no. just, you picked people, didn't you? You And there were plenty of times where we've had conversations where we've said, this is these are people who have maybe applied or who we've got in mind, but we've both said that we'd want representation. And especially, because for me, is I like the point in which you, you mentioned really first of all, is I do, I sit on the very firm in the idea that the reason why stand-up comedy is predominantly male is because it is already predominantly male. And when little kids are seeing or teenagers and young people are watching it, they don't see themselves represented. So, and it's, it takes a lot more of a gumption of a person to say, I don't see someone doing it, so I'm going to be the first. And it's just a lot more of a gumption, so it becomes more and more rare. I kind of have that mindset. I could speak about hours for it. But I, so I, I'm very much more of a case of I want to see representation of, of gender, of sexual orientation, of race, of disabilities, X, Y, and Z. And, and the limit, it's, it's limitless. And I think it is important to have some representation. But I think Nick will probably find this more than I would, is I do think it's a lot more important to make sure that you're putting a good show on. You're putting a, a good a show that is, it, like you said, is I think this is where that that stereotype might come from as well. Is that if you're putting someone on because they tick a box and they're not relatively doing the job, I wouldn't do that for a nurse. I wouldn't do that for a doctor. And I'm not trying to I'm not trying to lengthen the fact that these two careers are the same, but you still need to make sure that it's going to be a good show for for an audience. Because then if not, you're tarnishing the industry. Yeah, 
I would say one big thing that if anyone's watching this of any like the who's not a straight white male, apply, apply for the gigs. Yeah. Because that's one thing that I've noticed by booking gigs is you get the same. Like I'll always have Alex applying for my gigs, and I know that I've put her on. And then you look down and you're like, well, I've only got like three women who've applied. Yeah. And I've got like a sea of men, and it's like I know there's more out there. And I so do just think apply. Well, it's the audacity, like not not in the sense that people have. Like I think it. Like I know I've been my worst enemy in terms of I've seen lineups and and been like oh I'm not going to apply for that because um I don't want to like it's rude of me to presume I belong there and so I've got in my own way in that sense I know I have and um, whereas Joe Bloggs who's like done five gigs will be like yeah fuck it I'll apply because why the yeah. fuck not and it's kind of having the audacity to just do it and yeah. so I do think I know from other comics who run gigs that, that say the same thing, like it's generally just less women that do apply. I think it's more annoying when you've applied for a gig and the and the lineup is still not re- representative at all. Yeah. yeah. And like you know that you can like unless I'm mentally ill again, which would be so sad. Um like I really <laughs> hope that I kind of know what I can and can't do on stage now, and so like I think you kind of know that like you're like yeah, it's not it's not kind of living in a delusion and going I I deserve to be on that if you don't, but if you're kind of going okay, so I applied and you still said no, like yeah. then that's yeah. more annoying because and that's not just about me. That is also about like and I, and it's also just really sad that we cool cool all of the all of the like parts that make us different once comedy is concerned. So it's like, oh, so they don't have any people of colour but they have a woman. Or they don't have a woman but they've got yeah, you know, someone yeah. who's gay or non binary or trans. And it's like, we shouldn't pull all of us together because then nothing will change. Like, it's like, mm. you know, but I also do completely get it that, you know, most, most like, I, I've even said that to people. Like, I felt so awkward when, you know, um, promoters have put on Facebook, like, you know, can anyone recommend, like, women of colour in Manchester? And I've just been like... I literally don't know any. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like even like one, like a couple that I did know, ha- like did know, have moved away. And so then you're like, I can't even, I can't yeah. even. You, know, you and I get out of three jail cars. You've now left. Yeah. And that's <laughs> yeah. one thing that I was saying about applying I, is that if you're going to do it, because w- once we've booked, like if I don't have any women apply, then I'd message the people I know being like, do you fancy doing this gig? I know you've not applied, but did you see it? Did you fancy? Do you fancy doing it? And if they're like, yeah, then the next time you do a gig, you've already used that person, so you can't use them like the next month because. No, exactly, and I also think that's the, the beauty of of having something like you know, like some of your gigs, you do have returning audiences. You can't use the same people every time, yeah. and and that shouldn't be the case. But I think, yeah, like. It doesn't happen to me loads because I think I'd be more of an angry person if it happened to me a lot. Yeah. But like, I do see it sometimes, and I do think they need to give their head a wobble because I don't know what that's about. Yeah. Do you um, think, though, on that note, though, do you think sometimes promoters are aware that potentially female acts wouldn't do as well in a certain venue? Do you think that sometimes plays into it? Um. Or do you think, again, that no. shouldn't be something that should be a thing? No, because you know what? I have done some of, like, the... I think, like, <laughs> venues. And, like, and I'm not even ashamed to be, like, a kill. So, you know, yeah. you're just, like, don't... Like, I, I... And I'm not even a female comic that I know of that is known for that. That is yeah. known for kind of 
and being able to work certain types of rooms or whatever like I, I, the the goal is to work any any room isn't it um, mm-hmm. but there are certain comics that I know of that I'm like they kill that fucking room and then yeah it's kind of like some weird warped like well if like like we're living in a western like yeah well you know if if pistols get drawn like we're gonna save the ladies and it's like nah. yeah <laughs> The reason why I asked is because I've done a, I booked a gig for a venue and I didn't know the venue and it wasn't until I had booked it and I booked a vast array of different acts that included, uh, I don't included female acts that I realised it was a certain type of room, shall we say? It was rough as a bear's ass, and um, someone who I was there who was a female comic was like, do you know? She turned around and she went, do you know what? This is somewhere that I'd confidently say that you might not necessarily need to book a female act. And I turned around and I looked and initially I went, you know what, I agree. And it wasn't until a little bit later I went, no, actually I disagree. I completely disagree because for me, that doesn't necessarily reflect their gender. That reflects their necessarily the material and what material would do yeah, exactly. where. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because even like it's it's the thing of, of like people can talk about a manner of things. Like you you both seen what comes out of my mouth like, <laughs> yeah. I'm, like surprise like when people are like oh this you know the festival lady and then it's like trash comes out of my mouth and like, <laughs> I like that. but i think it's um yeah i i, I think that's so weird because it's like yeah, yeah. But anytime people get that like notion that you know you know it's that thing though uh, like i you know, Nick, sorry to bring it up again, but when I won that gong, like, I was like, I had a certain, um, I had a set that um, still gets me, like, kudos within comedy circles to this day, which is nice, but some audiences did not like it, and I think it was because I was talking about um, and yes, like guys can do dick jokes left, right, and centre, and it's not even better than I was at. And yet, I was talking about my vagina, and they just were not happy about it. And um, and yet, so if so people are going, well, that's an issue. It's like, no, like get on the right side of history. Like that's not personal preference. Like, okay, there are certain people that you kind of go you know what, they're kind of an alternative comedian, and they're kind of like, you know, like, they'll do a bit about, you know, naked attraction, or like, um, slim and world, like, you know, these big body words that, like, people love to talk about, and <laughs> and so they'll go, they'll work in this room because it is, you know, people that are, don't want to think a lot on a Friday, which I'm, I'm, I'm totally in that camp sometimes. Um, and so I think that's fair, but I don't think that is in any way gendered. Or, yeah. No, I completely like, agree. But I think you can get... Or I think whatever. you need to have the shit gigs as well. You need to do them. If yeah. you go Stop and you're like, there. oh, I won't have her there because she might bomb because it's rough. Well, everybody needs to bomb. You need to bomb. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, yeah. man. Don't worry about it. It happens now and then. It doesn't matter. No, I think, though, as well, what I think is important is, and is slightly important. It's why people do comedy as well. It's because, like you said, is that some people need, you need to bomb. I feel like if you're pursuing a career in comedy, yes, you do. You need to bomb. You need to bomb numerous times to be able to know what's good and what's not in different types of rooms as well. But I feel like there are certain people who are only doing it as like a little bit of a hobby and they don't see themselves progressing any further because they're just happy to do a little open mics and stuff like that. Then for me, that's not necessarily down to the promoter to be picking and choosing. They should know what rooms and places they should be applying for because, again, I'm not going to mention any names here, but I've had people who are very hobbyist about it and have applied for an open spot on a paid gig. And I'm a bit like, I don't want to sound funny, and this is me being maybe a bit egotistical, but if I was that act to find out that a known hobbyist was got the gig... But in actual fact, I want to progress. I'd be a bit peed off because uh, this, this, goes, do yeah. oh. this goes out to the hobbyist. If you're doing it, get the fuck off the track. There's too <laughs> many of us. All right. Find a different hobby. Take up knitting or oh, fucking fuse beads as we talked about last week. All right. Not stand up. 
so weird as hobbies to go for. Like, oh, I'll take a bit of Soul Destroyer on a Tuesday. Like, yeah. I was thinking that to yourself. Like, no one yeah, does that. I don't, know okay. a couple of people. don't get me wrong. I know a couple of people, but they don't. They don't stick at it that long. I will admit they don't because I realize I think they have one gig where they bomb and they're like, oh, I don't like this. And I'm like, yeah, it's fucking shit. Sometimes well, they should you should know just what? get off the people track now. Bomb continually. <laughs> I'm like, I, I kind of, I kind of, I'm like super impressed by, like, I'm like, wow, you really believe in your thoughts, but you're like, <laughs> I think he's going, he's going. You, you worded he's that going. wrong. You basically think, wow, you are really shit. Why? How? How do you have the passion to keep going? You must know you are crap. That's what you're thinking. Yeah. You must know. No, but I, I do admire it now. I'm kind of like, like one joke can like not go my way and it depends on it how what mood I'm in and I'm furious in the sense that I'll be like I fucking knew I shouldn't have said that or said it in a different place or I fucked yeah. it up and put it in the wrong place and then you're like Ugh. but like I also yeah it's weird I, I do completely believe that you have to die to get better but mm. yeah there's enough that you're like yeah, step away and just go and especially if you're not looking into it as a career. Like yeah. I think like like Nick said, there's, there's enough of us playing this game. And I think as well there's I'm not to go back to just bring it back to the gender thing just to kind of wrap up. I think there are like Nick said, there are plenty and you've mentioned there are plenty of female and minority acts out there. And I just feel like sometimes you may just need a bit of a push to kind of have that or basically i just wish that all minority acts just acted like straight white males and just had the gumption to say look at us because that's basically what they do i'm just saying so, i hate what, what you said earlier alex about when people say oh you're actually funny for a female comedian and it's like there's so many shit white commit straight white male comedians like too many yeah, yeah. like so proper ones where you go and you go Oh my god, he's on the bill, Jesus! <laughs> and then you <laughs> like you you nice about it. you're like all oh, right, and you just know that it's just not. And there's so many shit ones, and you're just like how how are you still plodding along at this? You're just taking room up for for no I reason. On this though, I think one of the best things that I and I think I know Nick will, will appreciate this because even though Nick is a stereotypical straight white male, I don't believe his material is very straight white male in the sense of yeah, I think it's different sure. and it's inventive. And obviously, as yeah, to by the way, can I just ask, are you recording this like visually for like Patreon or whatever? Well, we record them to go onto YouTube, yeah, and not for not for no one pays for it. We're not that bad yet. <laughs> okay, good. No, just because I look rough as shit, so I just thought of that. But then I was also like, Nick Cooks is wearing his, like, <laughs> shirt. Like, why the fuck did you learn it if it's just my voice? <laughs> no, this is, this is like, my comfy one. It's not actually a shirt, it's a T-shirt. So I've got, like, a comfy comedy <laughs> T-shirt, yeah. I thought like... you would like this, um, this country, by the way, Jack, it's a sound guy I'm in. Where's that from? Uh, Etsy. All okay. oh, right. No, because I swear the quote is from a video of summer, and I and I, I saw it early, and I was like, I want to. Me- I want. I, I, won't, I won't lie. I was like, I want to mention it, but it also indicates that I've just been reading Alex's tits this whole podcast. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing I'm trying to say is, and I think I know that Nick will appreciate this, and I was hope, and I'm hope that you do too, and I, I think you will. Have you ever gone to a gig and it's normal like your open mic gigs or maybe like mixed level where it's normal like five or six, maybe more acts and you know that the majority of people are going to do the same material as, as each other and you're like, I've got to sit through this and I've got to sit through this because I'm on fucking last. <sighs> and you've got to sit there and go, oh, dick joke. Oh, oh, another dick joke. Oh, oh, a ball joke. Oh, oh. Yeah, Have you ever not dick gone, jokes. Dick jokes yeah. get you a lot. But bad everyone wants a dick joke. Yeah, a bad dick joke. Like, oh, yes, I, I read that in a cracker like fucking 10 years ago, mate. Well done. Okay, first of all, where are you buying your crackers from? Okay, this might be a better a better example. Then. <laughs> so we have got... X, X-rated crackers like mine. <laughs> <laughs> like X-rated jokes. In them. Here's the one then. She's so got to go, oh, dick joke. <laughs> oh, Manny McCann joke. Oh, Brexit joke. 
Oh, another dick joke. Oh, the same Anna McCann joke, just told back up. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> and I've had it before where there's been like six of us, and I've been like the fifth or the sixth act, and I've got there at the start, so I can't now not leave. And I'm there going, <sighs> all right, I need a drink now. I'm going to have to use my free drink now. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's I'm going. Like, it all so Like, honestly, it's literally been like some of the gigs have been like, wow. Like some gigs have been like, <laughs> Maybe I made a mistake getting sober. Which, <laughs> <laughs> Which you didn't. You didn't really at all. Bad. Yeah. Oh, but no, I think that's the worst thing because you drive. If you drive to a gig and you can't drink, everyone's like, oh, as if you do it without getting having a drink. And it's like, well, I can't because I'm driving home. So I have to <laughs> do it sober. I have to do it sober. Oh. Yeah. And then there's just me who just... That a comic anyway. I mean, I I watched, weirdly enough, I was going through some old videos on my phone the other day, and I found a video of the only gig I've ever done when I've been I've been drunk. And I, after after I watched it, I went, oh, let's just delete that. That's never going to get watched ever again. So <laughs> it, it, it is definitely better to do it sober. But let's do a little bit of wrapping up here. So your podcast is available where? And the name of it once again, Miss Stringer. Um, Hi, Pastors Podcast. And like, basically, wherever you get your podcast, don't you? So, like your, your Apple podcast. Spotify, Spotify. Apple, That's Google. a typical podcast response. Wherever you get your podcasts. Wherever you. Well, the thing yeah. is. Well, it's hard to see all this to be over. Yeah, I didn't know this, but like when you put it on like the main host of it, it goes to websites that I didn't know exist. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, all oh, right, okay. Didn't know that was a thing. Um, and if you don't get it from one of them that's on there, stop being weird and just go on a proper website. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Just go, yeah. go somewhere proper. But uh, that is your podcast, though. And um, where can people find you necessarily if they want to follow you on the social meds? So I am at Alex Singer 5 on Twitter and Instagram. And I think I've got, like, Alex Singer Comedian is a Facebook page. But, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And why? Uh, before we introduce what Nick's stupid handle is, why 5? Um, so, <laughs> so my, when I was, my sister's five years older than I am, so when everyone else, so, so my, who I do the podcast with, she has a terrible, um, like 12 year old email, like not good. Um, but my sister made mine. So, um, she was like, let's just go for like first name, surname, digit, like very clean. And so I've had that you know since I was like yeah like 10 12 whenever <laughs> you get that. and then and every other fucker had to like change theirs because they were like oh like cheeky whatever so yeah. can't can't XO XO and all that bother yeah. um whereas I've been like literally in the longest relationship of my life with hot men. yeah that's it <laughs> and for, for the kids that that is now outlook okay hotmail yeah. is now is outlook. outlook i like if you haven't got a hotmail account you ain't nobody all right you're too young yeah. you're too young that's the thing but i also like how you've just given out your email address on the podcast as well in some way or another <laughs> So someone's getting. Oh, someone's... I really don't care. Send me all your. Uh... <laughs> the troll can message me, and we'll we'll, uh, we'll collaborate. <laughs> David Quigley, get on it, get on it, David Quigley. Quigley, uh, but yes, and you can also find uh, Mr. Nicholas Crooks at Nick Crooks Comedy on Facebook, Instagram, not Twitter, which is Comed. Um, Twitter's an ass. Because Twitter's an ass, and you don't let me use any characters. And you can get me at I am Jack V. Um, everywhere, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, and uh, recently TikTok, but it's I am Jack V underscore because some twat already had it. Um, so <laughs> I'm also on TikTok, but fuck me, man, that's a graph. Have you been like, it's 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 hard. Like, I think unless you're like in, like, she she gets paid for TikTok. Like, all, all the TikTok kids will be listening to our podcast, and I always am, like, any kids. Um, but yeah, I just feel so like old and weird on it, and and I just think it's the easiest thing. But when you're trying to think of content, you're just like, uh, it's really I'm, yeah. 
I'm, I'm exactly the same. And I've had one video that went, like, I would say viral, but in the grand scheme of things, it didn't. It got 6,000 views. And it was basically me just like fake singing to a song that someone else had already sung to. And I was like, hey, this is what goes viral. That's what goes viral. There you go. <laughs> Science, oh. yes, he's paid for a TikTok video, it's amazing. Only like 13p of it, but like still going somewhere, isn't it? It's still 13p that I'm not getting right now, and I put some hard in mine. A few videos, and that's a Kit Kat. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Think about a few it that videos, way. videos, and that's a Kit Kat. There you go. <laughs> but just one last thing as well is you can always find the podcasters page, uh, as I was, it's at ngoc pod and we're currently on facebook and twitter but before we go alex have you enjoyed your time with the nice guys yeah love it that sounds like like when you said that it sounds like a porn video <laughs> i was a nice guy so we've just gone through a whole like, sexual harassment <laughs> no i know i'm not going to mind um, no love it keep being nice boys <laughs> you know? I'm turning off if all this gets even more pot and pot of porny. <laughs>